back in 2015, we as a society were blessed with a gift from God. And what was that gift, you may be asking? That gift was Cool Cat Saves the Kids. Yeah, uh, I like penis in my mouth, yeah. Saves the Kids was a cultural phenomenon that took over the entire commentary side of YouTube back in 2015. I guarantee that if you go back to any commentary channel they probably have a video either talking about Cool Cat or reviewing the movie as a whole. Now this had a lot to do with the movie itself being so bad that it was amazing but also to do with the creator of the movie who is Mr Derek Savage. It had such a huge impact on internet culture as a whole as well and I think it's time that we take a look back and really appreciate the masterpiece that is Cool Cat Saves the Kids. <laughs> Cat Saves the Kids is a cinematic masterpiece that was released all the way back in 2015. Now, Cool Cat, the franchise, was created by the god himself, Mr. Derek Savage. Derek Savage is an American director and writer who is probably really only known for being involved in the Cool Cat cinematic universe. The greatest cinematic universe to ever be created. He got his start writing the Cool Cat book series sometime before 2015. I dug through the entire internet, I read through the Cool Cat wiki, I could not find anything that would suggest when these books were released or written. I have absolutely no idea. However, I can kind of maybe make an educated guess because I'm such a big brain and I could probably maybe assume that they were written sometime in the early 2010s, maybe even the early 2000s. Again, I'm not really sure because nobody really seems to know a lot about these books. Daddy Derek, please tell us when the New Testaments, if you will, were released to the public. Not much is actually known about these books except for what is actually inside the books, like the actual content and the stories and stuff like that. But what we do know about them apart from that is that these books are where the character of Cool Cat was established and created and stuff and it's also what inspired Derek Savage to create this movie Cool Cat Saves the Kids. It's funny because the books all follow the same type of structure like in the titles of like Cool Cat loving something. So for example right you've got Cool Cat loves baseball, pretty standard right, but then you've got Cool Cat loves MMA karate and then who could forget the classic Cool Cat loves military children and I think that's a bit suspicious if you ask me. Somebody check this man's hard drive. Now from what I could find within the Cool Cat wiki and stuff like that, there were about 16 Cool Cat books that were released, but Derek Savage actually did release other books that weren't a part of the Cool Cat franchise, or the Cool Cat cinematic universe if you will. These books included a series about a character called Trolley, and also a book with a character called Buildy. Again, not much is known about the Cool Cat books except for the fact that they exist, and that they are the reason that we have this absolute godsend of a movie that is Cool Cat Saves the Kids. Speaking of which... <laughs> This movie is basically three short movies put together to make it seem long enough to be considered to be like an actual full length film. The three short stories within this movie are Cool Cat Stops Bullying, Cool Cat in the Hollywood Parade and of course who could forget the classic Cool Cat Finds a Gun. Now what's weird about this movie is that the three short stories that I kind of spoke about a bit earlier don't actually ever really connect. Like the only thing that connects them is the fact that all the characters are in them. However, they just feel like three completely different movies and that's because that's what it is, right? It's like three different stories that have been pure connected to make it seem like one movie, but there's never anything that like connects them or like interlinks them, so it just seems like you're just watching three short movies one after the other, which is exactly what it is. It's just very bizarre and it makes the pacing and the structure of the movie very, very weird to watch. And I think if you didn't know that that's the way it was when you went into the movie, like you would be a bit confused. But anyway, there's not really a plot to this movie either. Like everything seems to just get wrapped up and then we move on to the next thing. And it's like episodes are TV show. Now, I think it would be very groovy if we went over each segment within this movie. Starting, of course, with... Now, Cool Cat Stops Bullying is the first segment that appears in this movie. This one basically has Cool Cat trying to defend his friend Maria from her bully, who is played by my favourite character in all of these segments within the movie. He is the best character in this movie, right? And this character is the icon, the absolute menace to society that is Butch, or Butch the Bully. Now, I would also like 
to bring up the fact that Butch is a very stereotypical name for a bully character but you know what see because Butch is such an icon in this movie I will let that slide that is absolutely fine by me anyway I'll stop being such a, a Butch stan and I'll continue on with the video now Butch bullies Maria and then because Cool Cat decides to stand up for Maria Butch is such a king that he, <laughs> that he decides to bully Cool Cat as a result of this now it's also important to note that in this movie Derek Savage although he created it and he probably directed it and wrote it and stuff like that he also plays Cool Cat's father and is referred to only as Daddy Derek in this movie. Cool Cat's mother is basically a cat as well like she's dressed in the same kind of get up as Cool Cat so she's a cat so can I ask something I'm just gonna put something out there would that not make Daddy Derek a bit of a furry or a furry enthusiast? Oh you know I love to help you all the time I'm get over give me a hug. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is going on in here on this day? And I don't know what's worse to be honest. They're both just as bad as each other in the eyes of the Lord. It's just this this family are just furries and like anti furries and that. It's just a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> Back to the story, my god. Now, Butch and two other children that he recruited to be bad little villains with him are basically spray painting on this wall. And Cool Cat sees them and goes over to confront them. And basically, Butch runs away and leaves the two of them there to deal with the repercussions of what Butch has done. And the two kids are like freaking out because they're like, oh my god, Butch is such a snake. And I think this is what makes Butch such a great villain because the fact that he doesn't care, like, he's such an icon and like he's the greatest villain in cinematic history. And and you cannot cry about it but you know it's true. So basically Cool Cat goes over to the two bullies that Butch left behind and asks them why do they bully people and basically the two kids tell Cool Cat that it's because they aren't loved and Cool Cat tells the two boys that's not true because I love you. I'm Cool Cat and I love all kids! Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> That is just very suspicious, um, I'm kidding on, that's very sweet, very wholesome times. So what's funny about this scene is that they basically filmed this whole movie in a suburb in America and basically they, f they didn't really block it off so people couldn't come into the street because they probably couldn't afford that because the budget was probably really low for the movie. So what they ended up having to do is just film on the street while people were living there, so like people were like going in and out of the houses and like driving about and stuff like that. But the funniest, most iconic moment in this movie happens in this scene and you might be wondering to yourself they're just having a lovely wee wholesome exchange what is iconic about that and i will tell you my good sir the thing that is iconic about this scene is that in the background you can see a man walking out his house and then looking at what's happening seeing this big furry talking to these children and then the man just walks back at his house again and acts like he never just seen that it is the most iconic thing i love this goddamn movie so much so basically we then go to a scene where cool cat is in his room and also i want to kind of point out in cool cat's room he just has pictures of himself like all over the walls and stuff and I think that's a bit narcissistic so he's a furry and he's narcissistic. Cool Cat is just kind of thrashing about his room like being, being very weird and whatever like doing stuff that furries do. And then he checks his computer and now basically Cool Cat realises that he has been cyber bullied. Now us as the chads of society don't know what being bullied is like, we don't understand it but let me paint a picture for you. Being cyber bullied is basically like you know when you have your Roblox account and somebody hacks into it and steals it, that is what being cyber bullied is. It's when people bully you on the internet. It makes Cool Cat very angry because Cool Cat can't stand the thought of him not being seen as a chad to his peers. Now I'm going to give you some options and we're going to decide what do we think Cool Cat did in response to being cyber bullied. Now just keep in mind this movie is educational, this movie is supposed to teach kids what to do when they're being bullied. Let's decide what we think he would do. Does he A ignore the bully, B report the bully's account, C tell his parents, tell daddy Derek about being bullied or D have a bitch fit and cyber bully them back. Yeah he picked D, he, pick, he picked D. <laughs> Basically, Cool Cat freaks out on the bully and messages him back and basically cyber bullies him back, essentially. You don't talk to me like that, you little piece of sh And now, this message that we are given as the viewers is to basically stick up for ourselves. This could be a good message. However, I think this movie is for little children and I think if you're teaching children the message that if they're being bullied then the appropriate thing to do is to get down to the bullies level and bully them back essentially like I don't think that's the best message to send I think what they should have done is maybe just had Cool Cat go down and tell his mum and his daddy Derek that he's being bullied and I think that that would have been maybe a more appropriate response but hey like 
like Woody Allen I've not been bullied before because I'm such a chad so I wouldn't really know what to do of course. Now this segment of the movie was actually based on one of the books from the book series that we spoke about earlier in the video and the book that it was based off is appropriately titled Cool Cat Stops Bullying. We then move on to the next segment in this movie which is of course. So basically Cool Cat wants to go to a parade in Hollywood and asks Daddy Derek if he will go with him and Daddy Derek is like okay Cool Cat my guy like I'll take you to the parade. Now just keep in mind this just went from being about a bullying story to being about Daddy Derek and Cool Cat going to Hollywood so you know it doesn't really make any sense like like pacing wise and structural wise but you know we cannot fight the ways of Derek Savage. However something that's quite groovy about this section of the movie is that Daddy Derek is in a majority of it right like he's basically the main character of Cool Cat goes to like in the Hollywood parade or whatever the hell it's called. They basically go to the Hollywood parade and they drive down it and basically I'm sure there's something to do with Cool Cat and Daddy Derek like playing the guitar or something I don't really remember I have brain damage because of this movie. It's quite wholesome though because Daddy Derek and Cool Cat get to have like their main character moment going down the parade and it's very wholesome very cute the end of this segment. That's literally it by the way like it's literally just them like thrashing about with a guitar and going to Hollywood that's literally all this is. Like at least the last section had like you learning about how to deal with bullies and stuff. This section had literally no lesson in it this was literally just Daddy Derek and Cool Cat getting to be the main characters for literally like 20 minutes of my life. This section of the movie was originally released as a short film like straight to DVD kind of film back in 2012 and then they re-edited it and put it into this movie. Anyway let's just move on to the final section of this movie which is of course. This section of the movie sees Cool Cats and his friends just kind of hanging about and stuff when they find themselves in a bit of a pickle and that's because they find a gun. Now they're spooked to their goddamn calls and they decide to go get their daddy Derek to come and get the gun. However the iconic villain of this story that is Butch the bully comes back he makes another appearance and basically he snatches the gun and runs away with it. Now I do not condemn the actions of Butch the bully however what I will say is that I think the fact that they made this child so evil like for no reason like we don't get a backstory like we don't get like maybe Disney have like parents or maybe he's been abused or something like we actually are just told that this this child is like just evil like he's just plain evil he does not feel bad he doesn't feel sorry like he doesn't care he's the greatest villain in cinematic history now this causes Cool Cat to have an absolute meltdown and they go to tell Daddy Derek that Butch took the gun now Daddy Derek is outraged by this of course and he tells Butch's parents about the fact that Butch has a gun and the parents basically go and take the gun off Butch and give him into big trouble and the movie just kind of ends so like that's that's literally Cool Cat's house <laughs> now I think this segment is probably the better one out of the three of them now I think the first one is the funniest right but this one I think if you're looking at it as an actual piece of media and like you're actually going to judge it like you would like any other film the what they aim today was to be an educational film for kids and I think this is the only good message that they really had in this movie for example like the fact that like when the cool cat finds the gun the first thing to do is to go tell an adult and when somebody else takes the gun that is going to do bad with it they go and tell an adult and it gets handled with appropriately like that is a really good message to send to kids so I do think that that is a positive thing about the movie now this part of the movie was actually inspired by a short movie that Derek Savage had actually made before Cool Cat Saves the Kids kind of like the Cool Cat Goes to Hollywood one it's basically the same vibe except this one was released in 2013 and it was called Cool Cat Finds a Gun now this movie is the definition of it's so bad that it's god worthy right kind of like The Room The Room is like that as well the movie sets out to be this educational movie for kids but especially like with the bully section I don't think that it really saved any kids the gun one is actually all right in terms of advice and stuff because it actually does give good advice on how to deal with if you find a gun out in the street the Hollywood bit no 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 you're not getting away with that daddy Derek I am shaking and crying violently with rage I can't even I have tears streaming down my face for when I had to watch Cool Cat goes to Hollywood Anyway, overall, I'd give this movie a rating of 10 out of 10. Anybody who can't see that mm. is a savage and an idiot! <laughs> Now because this movie wasn't released by like a big production company like DreamWorks or like Disney or something like that, it was actually released by Cool Cat Productions and um, the fact that there's a production company called Cool Cat Productions is just so iconic but because of this there isn't actually a lot of information in regards to how much money the movie generated so I actually don't know if it was like successful or not. I'm gonna guess, okay, I'm just gonna go on a limb here and say that I don't think it was insanely successful in terms of like generating a lot of money like the B movie did for example because the B movie is just top tier shit. 
Jeff's Kiss movie. However, if we want to find out about what happened in the aftermath of this movie being released, we can look no further than internet reviews. Now, this movie has been dragged by everyone on the internet, right? As I said at the beginning of this video, it's been dragged by every commentary channel. It was dragged by critics. It was dragged by movie review websites. It was dragged also by YouTubers. It was dragged by everybody, right? Like, everybody dragged this movie. It's actually sitting with a with an epic score of 3.9 out of 10 on IMDb. What's quite funny is that people that like actually sat down and watched the movie like critically and like tried to actually like like look at it as like an actual piece of media always reviewed it really poorly but people that come into it and look at it as something that's really funny always think that it's hilarious because it's like one it's like the room it's like so bad that it's god worthy. There's only a special type of movie that can do that because so many movies are bad right but there's only a tiny amount that are so bad that they're god worthy and Cool Cat Saves the Kids is no exception to that. Now back in 2015 the fact that this movie was bombarded with negative reviews and stuff brought it to the attention of big movie review and commentary channels on YouTube and they tore it apart. They took the absolute piss out of it. For example, big YouTubers such as I Hate Everything and Your Movie Sucks were among many who reviewed and giggled at the movie. It even made a wee bit of a comeback in the last like, couple years as YouTubers such as Mimulus and PewDiePie have made videos on it in like the last like couple of years or so. Like try to watch it and stuff like that and talking about it. It's still quite like a relevant thing. Like I feel like like usually movies like that they'll kind of go away and they'll talk about them again but I feel like Cool Cat kind of comes back every now and again. Everybody remembers how absolutely insane it was. As a result of YouTubers kind of talking about it and stuff like that and it kind of getting more attention on that side of the internet like commentary channels and stuff, it was snatched away from Derek Savage and Cool Cat Saves the Kids now belong to the internet. The internet did what the internet does best and turned it into an absolute cultural phenomenon making memes and stuff out of it. It was absolutely everywhere back like in like 2015. It still even is sometimes I see some Cool Cat memes and stuff like that. It was just it was a real moment. Cool Cat Saves the Kids quickly became the new victim of the internet's fury and Derek Savage could do nothing about it, although he tried, and we will get into that in a wee bit, right, but he really did try to stop this. When you make Cool Cat say stuff like this, And I'm Cool Cat, and I love all kids! I love babies! Now that is groovy! Like, you're kinda just asking for it, to be honest. Now, when I was younger, I used to genuinely think that this movie was a joke. Like, I didn't believe that it was real. I was like, it must be satire or something. However, I quickly learned the brutal truth that this wasn't a joke anymore. This was so clear to me when Derek Savage began to actually get really pissed off that people were not taking this movie seriously. <laughs> Now, as mentioned before, the YouTuber I Hate Everything was one of many who actually made videos on Cool Cat Saves the Kids all the way back in 2015. Basically, I Hate Everything had a series on his channel called Search for the Worst where he would review the like the 100 worst reviewed movies on IMDb and Cool Cat just so happened to be one of them. On November 5th, 2015, I Hate Everything posted the iconic video that is Cool Cat Saves the Kids, The Search for the Worst. Although the review wasn't a positive one, I Hate Everything did say that it was a really funny movie. Not for the right reasons, mind you, but he did say it was funny, like he gave it a compliment. I think that when you've made a really bad movie, that's such a compliment. I know that's not what Derek Savage probably wanted to hear, but I think in the situation that he was in, that was probably the best thing that could have came out of it. Like the fact that people laugh at the movie is probably the best of a bad situation. However, Derek Savage did not like this video and he was not a happy guy about it one bit. So he filed a copyright strike on the video, which got it taken down. I hate everything as a result of this, uploaded a video describing the harassment that he had gotten from Derek Savage regarding regarding this video. Basically Derek Savage kind of wanted an apology and wanted them to kind of take back what he'd said about the movie. Now basically Derek Savage and I Hate Everything went back and forth for a wee bit. They made videos on each other, they kept updating their audiences on what was happening and stuff. However, the community on YouTube was not having it and they were they were pissed straight. Everybody, I remember at the time everybody was pissed off that this had happened because if, if Derek Savage won this, it meant that copyright on YouTube, it was like people could just come on and take advantage of it just because they don't like what you've had to say. On the 28th of November 2015, I Hate Everything announced the war was over. The copyright strike was taken away from I Hate Everything and he had won the war and the video was put back up on YouTube. It basically showed that people can't just abuse the copyright system, like it's just, it's no there to be abused, it's there to be fair for people that actually do get their content stolen and stuff like that, not for people that get salty when people leave bad reviews on their stuff that they don't like. Now I can kinda understand that if you put your heart and soul into something and someone tells it apart, it can be really heartbreaking, it can really really hurt your ego, right? However, 
art is subjective and the thing with creating content, whether that's a YouTube video, a movie, a film, a song, whatever it may be, people are allowed to review it and have an opinion on it, right? That's just freedom of speech, that's just the way it is. Now, I understand why he felt so salty, however, you can't control how other people view your art and view your work and stuff like that, however, what you can control is how you react. <laughs> Now I think that this movie was genuinely made with good intentions and was supposed to be this wholesome little movie about educating kids and stuff like that. However, it was just unfortunately found by the wrong crowd. The quality of the pacing and the overall production of the movie is why it was just trolled so much. It happened with Cool Cat Saves the Kids and it happened with The Room. It happens with every movie that is just so bad that it's good. I think that Cool Cat Saves the Kids is in this kind of sweet spot of being a really bad movie. However, it's also in this perfect place as well where it is just, it, it's so bad but it's so funny at the same time because it's so bad. And that's why it's in this kind of like sweet spot of being like, this movie is god tier this movie is god tier because it's so bad but it's so good at the same time it's so negative that it's just created this big positive i think that when movies become internet phenomenons like you've just won the game of media like you have won because what this means is that you've created something special enough that it becomes something bigger than what you had originally wanted it to be this movie was set out to be just this educational movie for kids and what it ended up becoming this cultural phenomenon on the internet which is why cool cat saves the kids is an absolute godsend of a movie.